Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about what to wear when you're on a ski vacation, snowboarding vacation, or just in extreme temperatures. So the point of this video today is to make sure that you don't freeze to death while you're on vacation and that you have an excellent time and you learn from my mistakes. The most important thing to remember when you're trying to stay warm is you definitely want to dress in layers. That's the key. The first layer that we're going to talk about is going to be your base layer. Your base layer is extremely important because this is what wicks away moisture. When you're up there and you're going down the slope, you're going to start sweating. And whenever you start sweating, if you don't have a good base layer that's wicking away the moisture, it's just going to act like someone dumped water on you and you're just going to be freezing. So I like Kari Tra. She has so many cute little um, patterns. It's just adorable, but there's tons of amazing base layers. If you can see here, it's really, really thin and it just goes on well underneath everything else. So that's your base layer. The next thing about your base layer is you don't want it to be too long. So if you buy your pants where they're a little bit too long, then they're gonna get baggy around your ankles. They're gonna cause wrinkles. And then when you go to put your sock on over it, you're gonna have so many wrinkles underneath your sock and it's really gonna hinder the way that you ride. And it can honestly really ruin your day. So just make sure you can opt for a midi link where your sock just comes a little bit over the base layer and you don't have to worry about the wrinkling or you can pull the base layer up. Socks. Okay, everybody has their own preference on socks and there's no one right answer. Some people like a really, really thick sock that they feel like is gonna keep them warmer. I prefer a thinner sock. I don't know the brand on these, but I'll try to find something that's similar. They have this ribbed area and they're thin in some areas and they're thick in some areas and they're very long. I actually think they're too long, <laughs> honestly, now that I'm thinking about it. The next base layer we're gonna talk about is the glove liner. I consider this base layer because it goes underneath the main layer, but this is the glove liner I have. It's smart wool. I don't know if you can see, let me see if I can get it close to the camera. It is iPhone compatible and it just makes it easier so you can text on your phone. They're warm, they also wick away moisture and trust me, you're really gonna want these. When you're up on the lift and you wanna get your phone out and you wanna text or you wanna take some amazing pictures, you don't wanna have your hand in the freezing cold weather and then have to stick it back in your glove. These are must-haves. Let's talk about mid-layer. The primary point of the mid-layer is for insulation. So you can wear anything. If it's a warmer day, you can just wear something like a sweatshirt. You can wear something like this. Primary thing people wear is fleece. I have this amazing jacket that came with my ski jacket and I really love it because it's so cute. I tried to find the link for you guys, but I don't think they sell it anymore. I will put the brand down below. Um, I just really like that the outer jacket came with a mid layer. The only thing I don't like about this is that it has this hood in the back and it can be really bulky and this hood doesn't come off. So I would prefer to wear something like this in my mid layer because the hood's just like so bulky in the back of your neck with everything else on that that's the only reason I wouldn't recommend this. We're finally to the outer layer. Let's start with snowboarding pants. So these are basic snowboarding pants. They have two pockets in the front. They're belled at the bottom to go over your boot. And they have this little inside portion that goes tight around your boot so snow doesn't get up inside. And these have really served me well. The brand's North Face, I've had them for years, and they're just a really basic pant. Okay, let's talk about jackets. The most important thing that you're looking for in a jacket is you want it to be wind resistant and you want it to be water resistant. In the past, I had jackets that were basically like a shell, but they did their job. They just felt like a shell. And this year I got this jacket and it is water resistant and wind resistant, but it's really soft. The brand is Obermeyer and I'm really excited to try it out. Also in a jacket, what you wanna look for is you, you want the hood, you wanna have the option for the hood to come off and on, just in case you don't want it or it's too bulky. And usually they most, have a front pocket, a breast pocket. Um, that's about it. Okay guys, next item on our list and by far the most important by a landslide is 
the outer gloves. These little babies, they're what keep you warm. They are what keep you from getting frostbite and being miserable. One year I was like, there's no way I'm spending that much on gloves. They can be like $50. And I went one run and came back down and I was like, nope. I had to go to the store at the slopes and buy the gloves and they were way more expensive. So I just recommend investing in a really good pair of gloves. They're awesome. This pair is by Burton. They can tighten up if you can see that. And they have little hooks that hook to your jacket. Hook them to your jacket because let's just say you're on the gondola and you're chilling out and you're like, you know what? I wanna take a selfie because I look so cute and I wanna Instagram this moment. And so you get your arm up and you're ready to take the selfie. You have your glove off, it's set in between your legs and then it drops. <laughs> it happens all the time and you don't wanna be that person. So take this advice and hook the glove to your jacket. Let's talk about eyewear. So when I first started skiing, I didn't want to wear goggles. I felt like they were so ugly and I thought I would look way cooler in a pair of sunglasses, but don't, just don't, just don't do it. Don't wear the sunglasses, especially if you're a beginner, you're going to fall, you're going to break them. And the goggles are so much better. These are Smith's. They don't have a dark lens. If you want to get a darker lens, you can, but it might be a little bit hard to see when you're out on the slopes if you have a darker lens. There's so much to know about goggles. I was researching goggles for this video and when you go shopping for goggles, just ask them about it. The most important thing is to make sure you have UV protection because you can get snow blindness. And basically that is from the sun's glare off the snow. It, it gives you a sunburn in your eyes. So where are the goggles? They're actually cool. It's time to accessorize. Let's talk about the first accessory, which is this neck warmer. It is wool on the inside. I really like it. It served me well. In the beginning, I did not think I needed a neck warmer. I didn't want a neck warmer, but then once you get out there, you need a neck warmer. I thought that my hair would keep me warm. I thought I could just like, oh, I can tuck it in and I can zip this up and it's gonna be fine. But let me explain to you why that is not fine. And don't wear earrings because it's probably about to pull my earrings out. So you put it on like this. And when you're snowboarding or you're skiing, you want to be able to pull it up like this. This does get a little bit um, just sweaty and, and like in my face. So sometimes a more sheer fabric is going to be a little bit better because you do get hot and you do get sweaty and you put this on and then you get your goggles on like this and you want to tuck the neck warmer into your goggles to keep them up and this is the look that you have so you're going to get hot and you're going to get sweaty but you definitely want the option to pull this up next accessory on the list comb this down i don't even know why i'm combing my hair because I'm about to try on some ear warmers for you guys. I say ear warmers because I'm assuming if you guys are watching this video, you are new to skiing and you're new to snowboarding. And I hope that you plan on wearing a helmet because brain injuries are fucking terrible and nobody wants a brain injury. So you can't wear this really cute little like ski bunny, Thing. like I know I want to wear it and like imagine myself going down the slopes and I look so hot but no when you have the helmet on that's not gonna fit under a helmet so I recommend hair in a ponytail this little number because it's lightweight it's wicking it's warm it's easy the helmet's gonna fit over it and yeah it's just all good all the way around you can do a warmer one like a fuzzy like this the number one thing is, and you can even do a beanie, but it just needs to be thinner fabric that's gonna go under your helmet. My helmet normally keeps me really warm. If it's a warm day, I don't even think you need these because they're just gonna make you hot and it's just gonna be one more layer on. Definitely, definitely, definitely try on your helmet with whatever underneath that you're gonna wear, just so that you make sure it's gonna fit. I typically wear the same thing every day i just do laundry or i have like two outfits i switch in and out so yeah last but not least is safety we've already went over the helmet but 
The next thing on my list is mostly for snowboarders because that's what I know about. I tried to become a snowboarder later in life and I was so awful. I fell constantly. So I researched what the most common injuries are in snowboarding. It is the collarbone, breaking your wrists, and breaking your tailbone. So they have these amazing underpants that go on underneath your base layer. They're padded. You're gonna fall on your butt a lot, I'm sure. Maybe not, maybe you're not like me, but these are amazing and they're gonna help you not break your tailbone. So definitely well worth the investment. And these yet again are Burton. The next thing, which is very important to me because in the past, and I guess I still am, I'm a dental hygienist and if I break my wrist, I'm out of work. They're wrist guards. Here we go. They go on like this and they're really hard and sturdy right here. So when you fall forward snowboarding, it just helps support your wrist and helps you not break your wrist. Last thing on the list for safety is just for comfort, honestly. And these are knee pads. I fell so many times on my knees. They were bruised even through all this garb. I know you're thinking I'm gonna have all this garb on. I don't need knee pads but you do, you do need knee pads. <laughs> so if you think you're gonna fall a lot, then go for the knee pads and the butt pads. And I don't know, if you need your wrists, I would go ahead and invest in these as well. Okay guys, that is it for what to take on a ski or snowboarding vacation. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. And if you have any suggestions, please leave them down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I really, really would appreciate it and it would really help my channel. So until next time, bye guys.